Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I thought I'd do a video and uh, to teach you guys about how to solder. Especially if this is your first time soldering and you're working with electronics and you're really just not too sure on what you need for supplies, etc. Um, now, in the case of um, working on small electronic stuff, um, you should actually get one of these helping hands um, machines because they really do help a lot. See if I can uh, get a better view on things here. Okay, so I've got a helicopter PCB board here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a good look at it, and we're going to look for little tiny cracks in the solder joints. Um, a lot of helicopters will malfunction, especially right out of the box, um, because there may be some bad solder joints. And um, this stuff sort of happens from time to time. It doesn't happen all the time. Um, it's kind of like um, you know, pig in a poke type thing, right? So, a couple things you're going to need uh, if you're going to do any kind of electronics soldering, and this uh, is going to stand for using it on a car as well. If you're doing soldering on wires on a car, uh, you're going to need the same uh, sort of supplies. So, uh, anyways, first off, we've got our helping hands, and this thing has a magnifier glass, which actually helps out quite a bit because it brings you up to a larger picture of what you're looking at and uh, you need some some light so I've got one of these hanging type lights that you know uh, go over top of things and uh, so I get it as close as I can to brighten everything up and what we're looking for here like I said are maybe broken joints loose joints um, anything that looks like it might have a little crack in it um, discolored joints that look very very dull uh, is usually a result of what's called a cold solder joint and these uh, cold solder joints can also cause problems. Now just by taking a quick glance at this board, I can tell you right now, I can see at least a dozen bad solder joints on this board that are going to have to be fixed. But we're only going to fix a couple of them just to show you how it works. Now the soldering uh, tip of choice would be one of these fine point ones when you're working with electronics uh, with PCB boards. You need a finer tip. Now, the soldering iron that I'm choosing to use in this video is actually a Ronson Butane, and I really love this thing ever since I bought it. I haven't even used my plug-in soldering irons. In fact, I don't even remember where I put them. And I really could care less because this thing is the cat's meow. Um, this is a three-in-one jobby. It can do soldering. It works as a straight torch as well when you ha don't have this tip in. Uh, when you don't have a soldering tip on the end of this thing, um, it actually works as a heater, so if you need to lift paint off of a surface or you know that sort of thing, you'll be able to do that uh, without any difficulty uh, with this little jobby. So it comes in pretty handy for that, and even if you have to do some plumbing, um, also very handy. And you got to line up this slot um, in just the right spot in here to get it in there. There we go. So that's lined up. And uh, you don't need any tools to tighten this down. I never do. I just tighten it finger tight. And away we go. Now the other thing you're going to need is some soldering paste. Now this is soldering paste that's specific for electronics, not for plumbing. Plumber solder will not work. It is totally different. Reacts totally different. Um, so don't use that stuff. Only use soldering paste approved for electronics uh, repair. The other thing is you're going to need is some of this skinny wire. Now this is solid wire, it's not Rosencore wire where it's got a built-in flux and that kind of wire uh, that has a built-in flux is not good for electronics. Okay, so don't use it. Use the solid wire. Now this particular solid wire actually contains lead. There's newer soldering wire out that's uh, more of a tin base, doesn't have the lead out of lead in it. So you know, I use the lead stuff, and I've had this roll for years and years and years and years, and you know, I still got quite a bit left on it. So, and I've done a lot of soldering. Um, you know, and you don't usually go through a lot of solder when you're soldering stuff. So, anyways, back to the helping hands here. We've got it set up. We've got our little uh, magnifying glass here set up so we can see where we're going at. So, to use this soldering iron, make sure the vents are open at first. And start her up, push in your lock button so it stays running. Count about 15 or 20. 
and you'll see it's glowing red in here. It's seeding up the tip. And after about 20 seconds, close off the ports. Okay, this will keep it going and it will cause it not to overheat because there's a little um, pack inside the heater uh, unit here that can't have a straight pure uh, airflow flame at it for too long. So you only want to heat it long enough to get that uh, thing up to, to heat and then you close off the vents and it'll stay running and keep heating everything up. So we're going to take you through the soldering of the connections first. And uh, it's very, very simple. Just put a little bit of solder on your tip, just so that you can see that it's there. And just go up to your bag connection and touch the connection. And if you've got enough solder on, it should just suck it right up. But if you don't, then just hold your solder and your tip on there. And just put some solder on until it drips around the area. And then you're done. It seals it right up. So we'll go to the next one here. Now the other tool you're going to need that I should have mentioned, which I will now, is what's called a solder sucker. So if you actually um, end up putting too much solder on you cross two joints, you can use this tool called a solder sucker. And you, it's just a plunger system, so you just push all the way down to load it. Go up to your connection that you need to take the solder from that you messed up on. Heat it up. Put the tip over. And push the button and it sucks the solder up. It takes a little bit of practice to do it, but you can get her done. So we'll go ahead and we'll fix up a couple more joints here. Okay, so just to give you a little bit better view, hopefully, we'll take this away. I'll change the angle on this. So now you can see this angle. I know where all these bad joints are, so. Okay, so that, that's uh, enough for the soldering part of the joints. The next thing I want to talk to you about is called tinning the wire. Now this is where a lot of people go wrong that don't use solder paste and they think they can tin a wire with just straight solder and you really can't do it properly and you usually cause more harm than good. So you need the soldering paste for this. Now strip the casing off your wire. Now you can do this a lot of different ways. If it's a very fine wire like this, don't use wire cutters of any kind. Uh, I like to use a lighter for this, or I'll use my fingernails if it's a skinny enough wire. And this is an antenna wire, so I've got enough of my nails that I can actually go in and I can break into the case and I can pull it free, okay, which I've already done. Um, the other option is I use a lighter. I heat up the casing just in a small area uh, real quickly. I don't melt the casing. I just heat it up enough that I can just grab it with my nails and just pull real quick. So what, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the process for preparing it. First you need to twist the wire because you don't want it fraying all over the place. So give the wire a few twists and I twist clockwise. Then we're just going to put a little bit on there just run it in and out of the container just like that so you get some coverage on your wire just a little bit. You don't need a ton of it. It'll coat it. Then you need some solder on the end of your soldering tip just like so. And then just touch it and bring it up along the surface. And that tins your wire. And you have a tinned wire that's ready to go into wherever you happen to need to attach it. So um, that's your basics. When you're done, 
push your button, stop your torch. So you, you, we've shown you some little basics on how to solder fine circuitry. You do have to have the small tip, the solid thin wire for electronics, soldering paste for the electronics. When you're putting a new circuit in, for example, too, that's another thing is you should pre-tin that circuit. Um, like we're talking like resistors, transistors, um, diodes, they all, they got metal legs on them and I like to pre-tin those things. So I'll pre-tin them, then I'll put them in and when you're tinning those you just want to cover the surface, you don't want it to pop out on you or balloon out. You just want to have the surface prepped, put it into the hole and away you go. Another way to do it is put the circuit in, put a, lit, put a little bit of uh, flux on your Q-tip and then and I do mean a very little, just enough to say that it's there because you don't want globs going on. And uh, then you can run that up the legs and then solder one leg at a time and uh, get, get it all soldered in there nice and pro and um, nice and solid so it makes a good connection. Um, now the other thing we we're talking about was these dull connections too. We've got, a, we've got some dull ones here and you can go over top of those and uh, just reheat them. Uh, sometimes all it takes is just a reheat and it'll reliquify and create a better um, fasten to the circuit and the circuit board. Um, sometimes you may still end up with a bit of dullness. Depends on what kind of solder was used on the board, you know. And um, But don't worry, if you've reheated it and you've resoldered it, uh, even if it is a bit of a dull finish afterwards, it's not that shiny, it's okay, it's going to be alright. But if it's already, you know, dull right from the beginning, I usually like to freshen those up uh, just to make sure that they're in there nice and solid because sometimes they're not solid. I mean, you, when you're talking stuff that's mass produced, if you ever watch the How It's Made show, um, you'll see how a lot of circuit boards are mass uh, produced and mass soldered. It's a really neat process. You know, there's not a robot sitting there doing one joint at a time. It's like dipped in this stuff. So that's where a lot of these cold solder joints can come from or missed solder joints. Um, hairline fractured solder joints you know you got to really look like from here you can't look without the magnifier but if you use the magnifier on this and you pull it back the more you pull it back the bigger the picture gets you'll actually be able to see <coughs> where it was missed um, or where there may be a crack in the joint or uh, an inward bubble in the joint these joints need to be repaired in order to be proper contact this makes all the difference on how well, in this case for this board, a helicopter, how well it's going to perform and, you know, use up the battery, etc. Um, because if it has anything that starts to arc and short, then it can use your battery up really quick. You may not have the proper responses that you should have to your helicopter, etc., etc. And a lot of these um, cheaper helicopters that are made in China too, not just the helicopter, but sometimes the remotes, may or may not end up having issues right from the get-go. I've only come across maybe two remotes so far out of a whack load of helicopters that I've gone through um, where I've actually had to resolder the wires properly inside the remotes as well as the PCBs. So, you know, it's not that often it happens, you know, but it can happen, so that's what you got to look forward to that if you do have a problem, that's something to look at first before immediately saying, hey, I gonna go take this back for a refund type of thing it may not be that there's actually a problem with the machine other than the fact you can resolder a couple circuits and you know you're up and running um, so that's something to uh, look at as well and in this hobby when you're into helicopters and RC toys um, you should know how to solder and do some maintenance and whatnot because it's going to happen from time to time even with buying a helicopter that works perfect right out of the package so anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. Hope it all works out for you. And uh, thanks for watching. See you again.